The Rosicrucian movement is a mystical fraternity which, by necessity, operated in secret for much of its existence. It claims that its roots originated in ancient Egypt from the time of Pharaoh Tutmos III, who organized the first esoteric school of initiates founded upon principles similar to those perpetuated today. Some modern researchers, however, assume that the Rosicrucian movement originated with a group of German Protestants between 1607 and 1616, when three anonymous documents were published in Europe. They were called Fama Fraternitatis, Rosicruscus, Confessio Fraternitatis, and Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz, Anno 1459. The Rosicrucians believe that it is not only possible but essential to personally know, through direct experience, the source of all being that is God. Vegetarianism is considered a very important part of the evolution of the individual and is justified on scientific, occult, and ethical terms. Rosicrucians are seen as sharing ancient knowledge with the purpose of manifesting an awakening from the intellect to a mystical consciousness or enlightenment. We invite you today to hear the sage teachings from the secret doctrine of the Rosicrucians. The Secret Doctrine of the Rosicrucians The Planes of Consciousness In the Secret Doctrine of the Rosicrucians, we find the following sixth aphorism. The Sixth Aphorism 6. As life is the essence of spirit, so is consciousness, the essence of life. Spirit is one, yet it manifests in many forms of life. Life is one, yet it manifests in many forms of consciousness. While the forms of manifested consciousness are innumerable, yet the wise know consciousness to manifest on seven planes. And these planes of consciousness are known to the wise as 1. The plane of the elements 2. The plane of the minerals 3. The plane of the plants 4. The plane of the animals 5. The plane of the human 6. The plane of the demigods 7. The plane of the gods in this sixth aphorism of creation, the Rosicrucian is directed to apply his attention to the concept of life consciousness, manifesting on its seven planes. This concept is represented by the Rosicrucians by means of the symbol of a linked chain of seven circles, each link penetrating the one on either side of it. The sixth aphorism wisely states that life is the essence of spirit. No matter what else spirit may be or may not be, it cannot be denied that spirit must possess the attribute of life in order to be spirit. Likewise, the aphorism states, consciousness is the essence of life, which is also self-evident. For no matter what else life may be or may not be, it cannot be denied that life must possess the attribute of life. A modern writer has well said that mind is the livingness of life and of course, mind is not but a term employed to indicate states of consciousness. Even the average person implicitly testifies to the fact of the necessary presence of consciousness in life by his distinctions between the various forms of living things. The higher the manifestation of consciousness in a living thing, the higher the degree of life he attributes to it. And when the indications of consciousness are lacking, he pronounces the thing lifeless. The proof of conscious activity among mineral forms at once leads to the thought that then minerals must be alive. Consciousness in its essence manifests as the attribute of receiving impressions from outside stimuli and the power to respond thereto. And the student will at once recognize this attribute as the fundamental test of living substance. Just as the Rosicrucians hold as a fundamental doctrine the teachings that everything is alive, so do they hold as equally fundamental the teaching that everything is conscious. But here is where half-knowledge is apt to fall into a trap and to attribute to the Rosicrucian belief quite foreign to them. For in the Rosicrucian teachings and in the most advanced modern psychology as well, the term consciousness is not restricted to those phases of consciousness most familiar to us, but rather to all forms of awareness, whether higher or lower than the consciousness of our everyday lives. 
The term consciousness is one most difficult to define adequately and this quite naturally for consciousness can be defined and described only in the terms of its own experiences. There is no other term analogous to it which would serve to indicate it to one who had not experienced consciousness. The word which probably best expresses the general idea is the term awareness. The Rastakrusian teachings hold that consciousness manifests on seven planes, each of which planes is interlinked with and blends into the one on either side of it. But each plane is composed of seven subplanes, and each subplane of seven minor planes, and so on until the multiplication is made seven times. Each of the seven planes of consciousness is named in the following synopsis of the teaching, and the main characteristics of each plane is given. The Plane of the Elements on this plane of consciousness is manifested the actions and reactions between the subtle elements of which all material forms are composed. Here occurs the play between the atoms, the electrons, the ions, the corpuscles and the still more tenuous particles of substance of which science has yet no knowledge. And going still further back, it may be said that on this plane occurs the play of phases of substance as much more tenuous and subtle than the electrons as the latter are more tenuous than the atoms. Little can be said concerning these practically unknown forms and phases of matter, although the occult teachings are quite full of them. In previous quotations from Haeckel and other modern scientists, we have seen that advanced modern science recognizes the presence of something like consciousness in the atoms of matter and ascribes their movements to likes and dislikes, loves and hates, arising from the perception of certain qualities in each other and the response thereto. This means, of course, that the atoms possess and manifest feeling and will in an elementary form, phase and degree. There are results arising from these manifestations of consciousness on the part of the atoms, however, which are not usually taken notice of by writers of the subject, either in the ranks of the occultists or those of science. Let us now consider these briefly. Science informs us that all forms of physical energy or force manifesting as light, heat, electricity, magnetism, etc., arise from vibrations of the particles of which matter is composed. These vibrations are, of course, caused by the motion of the particles, and these motions are caused by the manifestation of attraction or repulsion between the particles. Proceeding further, we see that the manifestation of attraction and repulsion between the particles of matter arise from the likes and dislikes, the loves and hates of the atoms and particles, and that these, in turn, are but manifestations of elemental consciousness. So we see here that even the manifestation of physical energy and force is but the accompaniment and result of the presence and activity of elemental consciousness. On this plane of consciousness are operated many of those forms of magic known to all occultists. The occultist moves matter not by exerting a physical force upon it by means of his mind and will, but instead by acting upon the consciousness of the material atoms by the power of his own consciousness. This is no place, of course, to go into detail concerning the phase of occultism, but it has been thought well to indicate here the source and nature of the power underlying occult phenomena of this kind and the why and wherefore of this manifestation. The plane of elemental consciousness, like all the great planes of consciousness, contains seven subplanes, and each of these seven minor planes, and so on, until the multiplication has been made seven times. The subplane we have just briefly considered is but one of the seven, and the remaining six are equally important. In these unmentioned subplanes, there are manifestations utterly unknown to modern science and to the uninformed person, but of which the occult masters have made a careful and thorough study. The Plane of the Minerals On this plane of consciousness are manifested the actions and reactions of the molecules of which the minerals are composed, and of the masses of mineral matter as well. Just as the atoms of matter manifest attraction and repulsion arising from like and dislike of consciousness, so do the molecules of matter manifest a similar like and dislike 
resulting in the attraction and repulsion between molecules and masses of matter. The molecules or particles of which a piece of steel, for instance, is composed, hold together by reason of the attractive power of cohesion, and not because they are fastened together by any mechanical means employed by nature. In the same way, gravitation manifests its attractive force. Moreover, on some of the higher minor planes of this plane of the minerals, there is manifested the crystallization of the mineral particles according to a definite principle of design embedded in the consciousness of its particles. The crystal is built upon a definite plane, just as truly as is the acorn or the oak. And in all of these cases, the pattern is but an idea in the consciousness of the combined particles. The Universal Builder works through the consciousness of the mineral particles just as truly and as wonderfully as through the particles of humanity which we call individual men. The study of crystals and their formation will open up a new world of thought to the average person and will give him a peep into the workshop of the Universal Builder in which he will see things heretofore unexpected and undreamt. The common opinion is that crystals are formed by mechanical causes, such as outside pressure, etc. But the careful student of science, as well as the occultist, knows that the formation of a crystal is a growth, and is as much the result of stored up physical ideas in the particles as is the growth of plant substance or animal bodies. The student of crystallography soon becomes convinced of the presence of life and consciousness in the world of crystals. In the contemplation of the plane of mineral consciousness, the student must remember that there are forms of minerals far more gross than those visible to us on this earth, and also that there are forms and phases of mineral life far finer and higher than those with which we are familiar here. The occult teachings contain some very interesting info ration concerning these to us unknown mineral forms and manifestation. It may be mentioned here that the ancient alchemists and some of the true modern alchemists have found in the fact of mineral consciousness the missing link of their science. The occultist, having a comprehensive understanding of the consciousness of a metal or mineral will be able to work transformations upon and through it which would be impossible by means of chemistry or mechanical methods of treating metals. Here again is given a passing hint regarding a subject of tremendous importance. 3. The Plane of the Plants On this plane of consciousness are manifested the actions and reactions of the protoplasmic cells of which the plants are composed. And on this plane, as all the other planes of consciousness, there are to be found high and low subplanes and subdivisions of the latter. At the lower pole of this plane, we find plant life, which is scarcely distinguishable from the higher forms of mineral life. In fact, as we have seen previously, it is almost impossible to draw a fixed line separating the two great plane divisions, for all planes blend into each other and are linked one with the other on the lower and higher poles of their activity. We have mentioned the diatoms or living crystals, which the best authorities regard as the missing link between the two great kingdoms of life and consciousness, but which really are plants rather than minerals. The diatoms belong to an order of flowerless plants, a genus of the algols. They are covered by a siliceous covering which gives them a crystalline appearance. They present the appearance of crystalline fragmentary particles, generally bounded by right lines, flat, stiff and brittle, usually nestling in slime in which they unite into various forms and combinations, and from which they often again separate. They multiply and reproduce themselves by division and conjugation. Thank you, caring viewers, for your presence for today's episode of Between Master and Disciples. Join us again next Wednesday for Part 2 of The Secret Doctrine of the Rosicrucians, The Planes of Consciousness. Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, is up next after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May Heaven's blessings embrace our planet in peace and loving kindness. For more details, 
please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.